Yeah, we move into the fast lane now with track and field. Jamaica's fastest two men in 2023, Oblique Seville and Akeem Blake, have both withdrawn from the 100 meters at Saturday's Racers Grand Prix at the National Stadium in Kingston. The two were among the headline acts to clash with 2019 world champion, the American Christian Coleman. Our in-house analyst, Leighton Levy, has been tracking this story and he joins us. Leighton, give us some more details as to why uh, Seville and Blake will not be competing this weekend. Two men with sub-10 clocking so far this year, Blake, as fast as 9.89. A brand new personal best and I think that it actually had something to do with his withdrawal from the meet this weekend because I spoke to his coaches this morning and what they're saying is that after that personal best clocking in the, at the LA Grand Prix, he was sore, which is not unusual. When you break through these barriers, your body tends to respond negatively. Like, well, what are you up to do? <laughs> so his body was sore. I was told that he didn't resume training until Wednesday because he was so sore. Mm -hmm. And so they decided as a precaution with the bigger goal looking at the World Championships, of course, mm -hmm. before that National Championships in about six weeks' time, mm -hmm. to withdraw him from the meet for, yeah. you know, just to ensure that he remains yeah. healthy. Yeah. For Seville, we're told that he has a hamstring injury. The severity of, of those that that injury are not sure about because I've been trying to reach Coach Glenn Mills and Sir Coach Mid uh, Glenn Mills. Have you listening to this? We'd love for you to pick up the phone. I've been trying to call you for all afternoon. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we hear it's, a, it's a, we don't know the severity of the injury. But I also, I think that based on what I've been hearing, it most likely will probably be precautionary as well, given. Mm -hmm the bigger goals ahead of the season, so he's out as well. Yeah, that Blake run in Los Angeles, how, how good was it? He did beat Coleman in that race as well, didn't he? Very, very good performance. I think when you look at the race, you break it down. Yes. Well, a better start than the start that he got in where he lost to, to Coleman. Um, was that Bermuda? And Lyles. Yeah, and Lyles. Yeah. Where he, he just got left in the blocks. His acceleration wasn't particularly great. Mm -hmm. And of course, he couldn't maintain his speed long enough. In this particular race in LA last weekend, you look at how he handled that race. The start was good, transition was good, acceleration was really sweet. And he held that speed for a lot longer. If you remember, he ran through the line upright, which means that he was still maintaining his speed as best, best as possible, even though Coleman was dipping towards the line. Akeem Blake is gradually rolling into that form that I think many will hope that will be even better um, later on in the year at national championships and ultimately at the world championships in Budapest. So it was a really good run and I think his coaches are quite pleased with what they saw and I think they're hoping for more this season. Yeah. How do these withdrawals affect the race as Grand Prix, you think? I think it'll have some impact because, you know, Jamaicans are obsessed with the 100 meters and I think that's where a lot of the attention is because especially given what we saw last weekend where he beat Coleman. So they're one-on-one -on -one this se se season, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So, you know, this would be like the, the tiebreaker, so to speak, yeah. with Akeem running at home. And, of course, Oblique, who's looked really impressive so far this season as well, to see whether or not how he, well he matches up with those two, given that Akeem is now the fastest Jamaican this year. So, you know, it, it, it's going to be a disappointment. But I think there, there's still so many wonderful athletes got to be showing up that I think is going to be still going out to see because I think the matchups that we're seeing, the potential, I was thinking, we were talking this morning actually, Ricardo, and one of the matchups that I'm excited about is that we're looking at the world champion and the world record holder in the 100 meter hurdles going up against the world under 20 champion and the world under 20 world record holder in 100 meter hurdles. I mean, so that's, that's the present and the future that's about to meet at this meet. And I think that's one of the races that I think many people see. Megan Tapper is there as well, and she's running really well. And of course... The as is the American Tia Jones, who is yeah, in fabulous form, form this yeah, season. Yes, a couple of 12-4s and looking like she's ready to go faster as well. So, and of course, you know, there is the, 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 the broad belt matchup with Hansa Parchman, you know, the, the two likely candidates for the, for the World Championships, medal candidates, I should say, for the, the World Championships this year. Broad belt just coming off a very, very confidence-boosting um, victory against um, Holloway. Grant Holloway, mm -hmm. and um, you know, and, you know, Sherika Jackson most likely be going up against Anthony Strong again, who we saw around at twenty-two one five. Mm -hmm. Had a story though her, on her today on the um, on the website. You should go read it up. Very she had some very interesting things to say because her injury from last year at the World Championships 
is still not fully healed, but she's able to run as fast as 20 to 1 fire personal best. Tells you that she's probably trending towards 21 seconds. Mm -hmm. And maybe we could see a time closer to that at the National Stadium in Kingston this weekend. Yeah, I want to go back to the women's 100 meter hurdles and specifically Karika Hill. We saw her run 12.75 at the National Stadium. Um, how long ago was that? About a month ago. Yeah. And she was just four one hundredth of a second outside the world under 20 record, which is 1271. Two questions. One, are you surprised that she hasn't competed since that 1275? And second of all, do you expect that 1271 world under 20 record held by Brittany Anderson to go this weekend? Possibly. And I think the reason why I don't think she's run since that time, I think when you're at the developmental stage where she is at, I think the focus a lot is going to be a lot on her mechanics, you know, speed between her, the things that will make her better as she goes towards the national championships here. Because as we've already established, Ricardo, the plan for her is to run the 100 and the 100 hurdles at the national championships. So those past few weeks, that's four or five weeks that she last, last ran, would be very critical in terms of ensuring that she gets all of those mechanics and the technical areas of her race right. Because I you know the, the hurdles are very, very technical race. Um, there are so many different elements to it. So I think what we probably would have seen over the past few years, in tra fair few weeks in training, is her honing those skills, trying to master them as they get close, closer to the national championships. So this is an opportunity for her to test herself against some of the best hurdlers in the world, including some of her own. And then that would probably give coach um, Ronaldo, Ronaldo Walcott. Walcott a good benchmark as to where she's at in terms of her season and her development. And talking about testing, I, I I think many Jamaicans are starting to become concerned. We haven't seen Elaine Thompson here for a while on the circuit. Shelley and Fraser Price has not opened her 2023 campaign yet. And of course, Sharika Jackson is the only sprinter right now, female sprinter, that you can definitely say is on track mm -hmm. for the World Championships. Um, this weekend, though, is an opportunity to have a look at young Tina Clayton, who hasn't been running a lot this year. Her sister, Tia Clayton, has been competing almost week in, week out on the local circuit, but not Tina Clayton. And she is set to be in action this weekend with Sharika Jackson also in that lineup and Brianna Williams also in that lineup. Well... What I can, we, we, we know Stephen Francis, and we know what he's capable of. And the, the fact that he's held Tina Clayton back as much as he has so far this season is ominous in the sense that maybe, and, and we saw that at Edwin Allen as well, where Tina, over the past two or three seasons, had moved ahead of her sister for whatever the reasons were. So we, could, we can probably safely say we can expect something special from Tina Clayton. It may not be a world leading time or anything, but it certainly would be a lot better performance that we, we've come to expect from her. Remember, this is a girl who is PR'd at 1095. Mm -hmm. So maybe something in that vein or in that, in that window um, we could probably expect from her this weekend. And a short, quick word on Brianna Williams. Um, she also, I think, will probably be running a season's best this weekend as well. I was told that cramp was the reason why she had to. She, wasn't, she didn't finish that race last week in LA, but she is at a stage now where they're expecting her to start going a little bit faster um, as she races closer to the national championships. And the last time she did complete a race, she had a season's best 11-20 11 11 in that defeat to Alana Reed at a J3's all-commerce meet. Um, just back to Tina Clayton a little bit, because the last time she competed, she ran about... 50 and then she just shot, shot it, it down, down almost to a stop and it reminded me of when Shelley and Fraser Price just came on the mm -hmm. scene and Stephen Francis would have her go to some races and she would run the first 40 or 50 and shut it off or she would have a bad start and try and run back and, and a lot of it almost seemed deliberate at the time and I can't help but feel as if I am seeing a similar thing with how Tina Clayton is being handled. Yeah, there's, there's a modus operandi to Stephen Francis. You know, there's a reason why he's one of the best coaches in the world. He will instruct his athletes to run particular phases of races. 
and then people wonder why, for example, they shut it down so early. But it's because what they're doing is they're adding a couple of things, the adrenaline factor of racing under pressure and then mm. executing a specific plan within that, within that um, um, parameter in terms of saying, okay, fine, so you're going, this is what you're going to do. You're going to work on that first, the drive phase and the acceleration or drive phase and transition to acceleration and then shut it down because the, that's the practice and under pressure in adrenaline because the adrenaline factor is very crucial in terms of your preparation because you can do a lot of things in training but when you're competing against people running against them who are trying to beat you you have to be able to show that composure while executing the specific mechanics of what you need to be doing mm -hmm. and i think that's probably what we will perhaps again see this weekend and what we probably saw earlier in the season from tila clinton yeah, well, looking forward to the races, Grand Prix. As am I, and yeah. I think we should, I just like to take the opportunity to say, look, yeah. come out and support the athletes. I think it's going to be a great meet. Yeah. There's a lot of quality there. Wade Van Niekerk is back in form, finally, yeah. 44 one this year. Noah Laz is Noah going to be here. If you're be into here, personality, yeah. you'll be fast. into that. Yeah. And, of course, Sharika Jackson, how can you not want to come out and see her yeah. do something special? 21.98 after a horrible start in, in Rabat last week tells you yeah. that we could see something even faster this weekend. So And, and the Jamaican Americans might not want to hear this right, but the stadium record, 1958, set by Usain Bolt in 2010. Yeah. No allies could threaten that yes. this Saturday. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and, and um, you know, what's her name? 12, the stadium record for the world hurdles, 1238, I think it is. Yeah. Yes, Stowers, Jasmine, Jasmine Stowers, who Amos, just recently Amos, got married. And Amosan is ready to take it. Um, well, maybe, maybe, maybe Tia Jones. Maybe Tia Jones. Okay. You know, because based on what I'm hearing, um, yeah. Amosan is not ready to run really fast yet. Okay, we, 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 we'll see. Uh, Jamaican fans not want to custom to seeing top class performances at uh, the National Stadium in track and field. There's a big cricket coming up next week on the Sportsmax channel because the World Test Championship final between India and Australia is on and you can see live starting the 7th of June 5 30 Eastern Caribbean time 4 30 in Jamaica the ICC World Test Championship final on Sportsmax Stay with Sportsmax on YouTube and follow us on all social pages for updates news and entertainment <laughs>